You ought to have known our aunt. She was charming. That is to say, she was not charming at all, as the word is usually understood. But she was good and kind, amusing in her way, and was just as anyone ought to be, whom people are to talk about and to laugh at. She might have been put into a play, and wholly and solely on account of the fact that she only lived for the theatre and for what was done there. She was an honourable matron, but Agent Fabs, whom she used to call Flabs, declared that our aunt was stage-struck. The theatre is my school, said she, the source of my knowledge. From thence I have resusticated biblical history. Now, Moses and Joseph in Egypt, there are operas for you. I get my universal history from the theatre, my geography, and my knowledge of men. Out of the French pieces I get to know life in Paris, slippery but exceedingly interested. How I have cried over La Famille, Rookbo, that the man must drink himself to death, so that she may marry the young fellow. Yes, how many tears I have wept in the fifty years I have subscribed to the theatre. Our aunt knew every acting play, every bit of scenery, every character, everyone who appeared or had appeared. She seemed really only to live during the nine months the theatre was open. Summertime without a summer theatre seemed to be only a time that made her old, while, on the other hand, a theatrical evening that lasted till midnight was a lengthening of her life. She did not say as other people do, Now we shall have spring, the stork is here, or they've advertised the first strawberries in the papers. She, on the contrary, used to announce the coming of autumn with, Have you heard they're selling boxes for the theatre? Now the performances will begin. She used to value a lodging entirely according to its proximity to the theatre. It was a real sorrow to her when she had to leave the little lane behind the playhouse and move into the great street that lay a little farther off and live there in a house where she had no opposite neighbours. At home, said she, my windows must be my opera box. One cannot sit back and look into oneself till one's tired. One must see people. By now I live just as if I'd go into the country. If I want to see human beings, I must go into my kitchen and sit down on the sink, for there only I have opposite neighbours. No, when I lived in my dear little lane, I could look straight down into the ironmonger's shop and had only 300 paces to the theatre, and now I've 3,000 paces to go. Military Measurement our aunt was sometimes ill, but however unwell she might feel, she never missed the play. The doctor prescribed one day that she should put her feet in a bran bath, and she followed his advice. But she drove to the theatre all the same, and sat with her feet in bran there. If she had died there, she would have been very glad. Though Walston died in the theatre, and she called that a happy death. She could not imagine that in heaven there must be a theatre too. It had not, indeed, been promised us, but we might very well imagine it. The many distinguished actors and actresses who had passed away must surely have a field for their talent. Our aunt had an electric wire from the theatre to her room. A telegram used to be dispatched to her at coffee time and it used to consist of the words, Her Sivertson is at the machinery. For it was he who gave the signal for drawing the curtain up and down and for changing the scenes. From him she used to receive a short and concise description of every piece. His opinion of Shakespeare's Tempest was mad nonsense. There's so much to put up, and the first scene begins with water to the front of the wings. That is to say, the water had to come forward so far. 
But when, on the other hand, the same interior scene remained through five acts, he used to pronounce it a sensible, well-written play, a resting play, which performed itself without putting up scenes. In earlier times, by which name our aunt used to designate thirty years ago, she and the before-mentioned, her Sivertson, had been younger. She had, through the influence of a benefactor, her Sivertson, procured a free admission for the agent Fabs, although he did not deserve it in the least, for he was always cutting his jokes about the theatre and teasing our aunt. But she had procured him a free admission to the flies for all that. He wanted to look at this player stuff from the other side. Those were his own words, and they were just like him, said our aunt. He looked down from above on the judgment of Solomon and fell asleep over it. That was the thanks she got for having got him a place in the flies. What did the agent say? Why, it was curious enough to hear, but there was malice and satire in it. It looked dark up there, said the agent. And then the magic business began, a great performance, the judgment in the theatre. The box keepers were at their posts, and every spectator had to show his ghostly pass book that it might be decided if he was to be admitted with hands loose or bound, or with or without a muzzle. Grand people who came too late when the performance had begun, and young people who could always watch the time, were tied up outside, and had list slippers put on their feet with which they were allowed to go in before the beginning of the next act, and they had muzzles too. And then the judgment on the stage began. Our aunt must needs go, so she borrowed a pair of fur boots of her lodger, boots with fur inside and out, and which reached far up her legs. She got into the theatre, and to her box, and boots were warm, and she kept them on. Suddenly there was a cry of fire. Smoke was coming from one of the side scenes, and streamed down from the flies, and there was terrible panic. The people came rushing out, and our aunt was the last in the box. On the second tier, left-hand side, for from there the scenery looks best, she used to say. The scenes are always arranged that they look best from the king's side. Aunt wanted to come out, but the people before her, in their fright and heedlessness, slammed the door of the box. And there sat our aunt, and couldn't get out, and couldn't get in. That is to say, she couldn't get into the next box, for the partition was too high for her. She called out and no one heard her. She looked down into the tier of boxes below her and it was empty, and low, and looked quite near, and aunt in her terror felt quite young and light. She thought of jumping down and had got one leg over the partition, the other resting on the bench. There she sat astride, as if on horseback, well wrapped up in her flowered cloak, with one leg hanging out, a leg in a tremendous fur boot. That was a sight to behold, and when it was beheld, our aunt was hurt too, and was saved from burning, for the theatre was not burned down. That was the most memorable evening of her life, and she was glad that she could not see herself, for she would have died with confusion. Her benefactor in the machinery department, Her Sivertson, visited her every Sunday, but it was a long time from Sunday to Sunday. In the latter time, therefore, she used to have in a little child for the scraps, that is to say, to eat up the remains of the dinner. She certainly only got half a gilder for that whereas the hind legs were paid for with a whole gilder. But then she had to walk bent, and to do without fresh air. That was all very interesting to hear, said our aunt. She asked, What will the play be tomorrow? At her death she left about five hundred dollars. We presume this from the interest, which came to twenty dollars. 
This our aunt had destined as a legacy for a worthy old spinster who had no friends. It was to be devoted to a yearly subscription for a place in the second tier on the left side for the Saturday evening. For on that evening two pieces were always given. It said in the will, and the only condition laid upon the person who enjoyed the legacy was that she should think every Saturday evening of our aunt who was lying in her grave. This was our aunt's religion. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel to see the latest videos. Thank you.